recording. I was planning to do a full video about everything I found during some data mining I did in the game. At first I was looking at the game files for a better, a better understanding on what I was looking at uh, when doing speedruns. I was trying to find some stats, I was trying to find um, various um, uh, the number data uh, regarding what's in the game. So actually, I I want to talk about most of the stuff that is present in the games file, but uh, it's a news content, which is highly probable to appear in later updates. Given that we have uh, a highly teasing uh, tweets from the, uh, the Game Kitchen, uh, I was first recording this video in July 2021, but now it's late August 2021, so it's been a while since, uh, since Strife and Ruin is out, so um, this is extracted from the latest patch, and I'll first un uncover some stuff you might already know, and if you have a keen eye, and if you have already a, d a dive deep into the game, but I'll be sure to uncover some stuff that I think nobody knows yet. So now on the what I'm using, I'm using Asset GUI Studio, which is something that is really helpful to extract files from Unity game. This is what I've used to extract all the uh, sprite sheets and uh, stuff uh, and images from the game. And this is just a quick uh, folder with everything I found interesting that I extracted. And this is uh, DNSpy. DNSpy is something that is good to extract uh, code from uh, Unity Games 2. So with this, uh, I'll explain a bit of the how I managed to get into. Uh, don't worry, I won't be diving uh, too much into the code, but as I am a game developer myself, this was uh, I was really familiar uh, with uh, how the Unity code and the C-sharp code is uh, supposed to function. So I've managed to find a quite... Uh, quite a lot of interesting things, so I'll be sure to uncover that for you. So first, um, I was uh, first talking about the direct number. This is just a small part. I want to talk about the fact that we have now detail number and data about the damage the bosses deal do, the beds, the spells. There is even a mod you can put in the game to have uh, damage displayed while you hit with any attack of your character. So this is really useful as a speedrun as it allowed for insane theory craft. We can actually finish the first boss rush under, in under two minutes now, so this is pretty insane. And then I want to talk about uh, my one of my first findings, which is um, here we have mea culpa spray sheet, uh, which is something that refers to a chapel. Uh, and so let me zoom on a bit. And uh, actually what really bugged me was this window and this sprite right here. I think it's not present in the game. I know the game, I've been playing the game a lot, and I don't remember seeing this anywhere. However, uh, when I received the collector edition, there is this, um, there is this uh, quick uh, comic you have that is uh, called The Kneeling. And there is, let me show you if I can, on my camera. I have this. Hop. There is actually this um, this part right here of the comics. This is exactly the same statue. So in this comic, there is a, a part where you suppose where the penitent one is uh, facing Crescenta and uh, uncovering the Mea Culpa sword. As you can see on the... As you can see here on, uh, on this uh, image, there is some hole here. So I think this is the statue that is um, keeping the Mea Culpa sword. So there might be a new intro or something of a flashback that takes you back into the beginning of the game and might be uncovering the beginning of the events that uh, are uncovered during the kneeling. So this would be really awesome as I don't remember seeing those chairs here and this window, I don't remember seeing it anywhere. So this was my first finding. Then 
I want to talk about uh, some art book and consistency. Unfortunately, I don't have the right the art book um, available right now, but maybe I'll do another video about that. There are some stuff that are in the art book, some sprites or some even lore files that are not presented to the game. But I have my theory that some of the um, stuff that are mentioned in the art book have been um, transposed to something else. Uh, then I want to talk about the cut item. Uh, if you've seen my previous video uh, on cut content, I've been uncovering a lot uh, regarding all the cut items that are in the game, some prayers. Uh, we have been talking on the Discord about the, the cut prayers we found. Uh, Ijvu, who has been working a lot on the game's files, have been finding a lot of stuff regarding that. And now, um, for the fun part, I want to talk about uh, some stuff that I found. So I was first uncovering stuff about the bosses. And as you can see, uh, in this part, there is this game controllers. And this is what uh, refers to the behavior of all of the codes uh, of the bosses. So there is bosses Amenicides, which is which refer to the Amenicides. Bidual Saint refers to Melchades. Um, blind baby refer to Exposito, but especially to the part that is the baby uh, in the background. The part with the worm is um, is uh, dr driven by this game controller right here, which is called Wicker Worm. And when I uncovered this code, I was facing a lot of inconsistency regarding the game files. And actually, there are some funny names uh, regarding how the develop the devs. Uh, named the different um, characters. For example, you have Esdras and Perpetua who are named the Ecclesias Bros. This is kind of funny because this is the parent class of both Esdras and Perpetua. And then there is uh, Chrysanta, there is Burnt Face, which is just Our Lady of the Chart Visage, but I guess Burnt Face is <laughs> more accurate. Uh, so Elder Brother is the first uh, Foss. High Wheels is the... Um, uh, might be the... Bo both of the bosses that are both of the elder brother we have um, on top of the um, on top of the high wall the wall of prohibition. Uh, Piety monster is ten piedad. Uh, Lesmes is actually a boss with nothing in it, and a lot of file from Lesmes refers to Kirsi. I uh, uncovered some code from the 1.0.6, so something that is like the version which is uh, which was out. Uh, one week after the beginning of the game, which one week after the release of the game, and the Lesmes file were here. So I think this is just a dormant file that has nothing in it. If we look at that, uh, there are not really much anything. Um, any, I think this is just like basic code with nothing in that. The behavior has nothing in it too, so... I don't think there are that much... Uh, there is that much to find uh, in the in this code, so I think this is just a, a weird stuff that refers to what uh, Kirsey has become, and Kirsey is then here. So I've been fi finding a lot of stuff. So there, Pontiff Giant and Pontiff Old Man refer to the last boss. Piety Monster is Saint Piedad. I've mentioned that. Uh, Kirsey is Kirsey. Tres Agustias, Tres Agustias. Weaker Worm is the last part, and then uh, we have. Uh, we have first the sea snake. So sea snake, as we can see, have a lot of uh, stuff that... Um, so as uh, as a first part, we have all the damage, get position, enemy attack, enemy bumper, enemy floor checker, enable physics. All of these are never implemented for some reason. I think this is just my extractor that has been going wrong, but I don't know if I look at, for example, like... Uh, Chrysanta, I think this is the same, if I look at that. Uh, Chrysanta has the same non implemented exception of, on a lot of her behaviors. So, And I, also, as you can see, uh, Finnish bosses have a lot of more depths uh, regarding the code. So, Sea Snake. Uh, sea Snake, where is it? There are a lot of stuff regarding the orientation and how the bus will behave. Um, regarding its position um, in the arena. So you have arena get bot far random point, get bot left corner, get near corner. So as a first part, I was um, speculating that the sea snake might be a giant boss that would be in a room and you would have to understand where it would come and you would have only its head to attack you from different direction. So a lot of uh, the code in the sea snake file are to position the snake in the room. And then I was 
uh, trying to find uh, stuff and let me see if I have it here. There is this uh, sprite sheet that I found in the game files, which is called Snake Boss Room Sprite Sheet, which is uh, basically a giant mast from a, a ship with a snake going around it. So I'm pretty confident with, um, I'm pretty trustful regarding the theory that the snake might be a giant boss which his head might be coming here and there in the different parts of the arena. And uh, after that, I also think that we might have also a whole world uh, which, would, which might be an extension from the Echoes of Salt, uh, the, 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 the part of the world which has some boats, cracked boats in it, because I found um, here, this, which is called the Naval Cave Sprite Sheet. A lot of that refers to some sprites, for example, those sprites right here, refer to the boats we have in the Echoes of Salt, but all of those other sprites aren't used anywhere in the game. And also there is this part of the Naval Cave Sprite Sheet, which refers to something that is a huge boat, and there are stuff to be found here. Uh, also, I, uh, there are some sprites of enemies I found. Uh, let me see if I can find that. Um, so here is the Naval Cave, Naval Cave Sprite Sheet. I've managed to extract a bunch of that, but my PC just can't handle too much uh, sprite. So here is a lot of stuff. And uh, so basically I have access to everything in the game. But I, I remember I have, there is a turret. Uh, in the name of the sprites. Uh, there is a, uh, something that might be interesting regarding that, yes. So there is a turret, which is something in the sheet that has a lot of animation, so this must be uh, um, a unique enemy to, to the sheep uh, that we might encounter, and it has a lot of different behavior. It might shot shot, it might ship, shoot, it might get hit, it might be idle. So I have my theory regarding it might be something that you can hit or you can have it an, as an ally regarding the boss. As the boss might be gigantic, you might be able to kind of protect uh, the turret in order to, um, to, to, to get uh, some damage on the boss. And you also have the so there are a lot of animations. Uh, I'll try to extract some animation. I have managed to get some gifts uh, regarding some uh, some of the findings I had. Uh, yeah, this is for something after. Also, there are a lot of stuff regarding enemies. There is this enemy which is made of sand uh, that has this uh, neat idle animation. So we might have something uh, regarding that. Uh, what else did I found regarding the uh, the cave, the naval cave. So there is this background sprite sheet, which may, which looks like a huge, uh, huge background of a cave. So this is really uh, similar to what we have in the Echoes of Soul. So I'm pretty confident there might be an extension to this place, which was kind of small and seems to have a lot of depths and stuff that would would have been uh, yet to be uncovered in the current patch. So this might be really interesting. Also, we uh, so I found some uh, some neat stuff. For example, these are the level design blocks that are used by the level designers to create the f first the shape of the world, and then uh, this is uh, this has all the art coming uh, onto it to make more of. Uh, of stuff. And actually, uh, in speedrun, there are some times where the blocks are a bit misaligned, so it tends to make you go into an aerial state and go back to a normal state, and some slopes have some inconsistency, and I tend to die a lot on that, and it makes me rage so much, <laughs> but I, won't talk, I don't won't want to talk about it uh, right now. Okay. Um, there are a lot of enemies. There, this is an explosion of an effect that might be a unique stuff to an enemy. Uh, I've managed to find. I think I have a gift of that. No, I don't have it. Uh, I have uh, this enemy, which is called the Roller Axe, uh, which might be something like of a color swap of the uh, 
this spear launching uh, bullhead we have in the um, the spear launching bullhead we have in the one of the first world right before Perpetua fight, uh, and they have a lot of uh, animation regarding the fact of launching their axe and their anchor, like there is the spinning anchor animation, so there might be launching. Uh, their uh, anchor similar to the um, spare the thrust launching bull but my guess is that the anchor might be coming back so you would have to be careful of the anchor co co going back and forth uh, towards you so this might be really interesting uh, what else did I find regarding this uh, this is called endless procession uh, this seems to be referring to what uh, happens in the true ending, the procession regarding the penitent who has been uh, uncovered. Uh, actually, this is something that uh, is not used in the game, but we have the cutscene uh, from the end of the game that is talking about all the, the, the fact that the penitent is becoming the sort of root gods. And Actually, we might have something of a post game that could be used. Um, th th this could be a background used from something that happens from the post game. If we like play as Crescenta, if the penitent one, uh, after the penitent one died, if there is something of a post game uh, sequence that is that has been added after the trending. So this might be really interesting. Uh, Okay, so also there is this unused animation for the Amanecida stomp. Uh, I think this is unused because as you can see there is no transition for the moment. Um, if you're not familiar with that, when you see a sprite sheet, it is basically read um, like you read something from left to right. So you start on top left and you go like this. So as you can see it goes like this and then after it starts turning it immediately um, start stomping and I don't remember seeing this animation anywhere in the game so maybe it might be updated in future patches but I don't think so uh, so this is the Miyakopa sprite sheet um, also there is this chapel exterior which isn't used anywhere and I think this might be the exterior of the Miyakopa chapel which might be the th something that uh, refers to the beginning of the games uh, this is some neat artwork I've already shared on the Discord regarding some previous art of the Lobster Sullivan, uh, the Lobster Pontiff we have uh, at the end of the game, with this, this sort of uh, cloth on top of his head, which is which he didn't have in the in the last um, <coughs> in the last version. Also, there is this enemy called Drowned Corpse. So this is an enemy that might be present in the ship level. Uh, there are also some death animation for the Drowned Corpse. Uh, this is something I've already found. Um, this is some... Uh, actually, we don't have something about an ice cavern, but I'm not sure if this is the thing that... Um, is opened after the the quest you do uh, from the Our Lady of the Child Visage Covent. So it might be something about that. So I, I, I was extracting those files um, just to be sure. And then you've already seen it, but there is something about Isidora that I found. Uh, we There are pretty much everything about Isidora. There is also this sink statue, which might be another enemy we can find in the game. There are multiple instances of that, so maybe this might be just some decor to to destroy. So yeah, and uh, so I, I was uh, explaining, I found the sea snake behavior, and then I found the naval cave and all the game data about that. And the other thing I found was this bosses called Isidora. And this bosses had a lot of behavior already implemented in the game. So this bosses might be really finished in the last pa in the future patch. So I have some gift about regarding her attacks. 
Uh, here is an attack she does, but she also have a fire uh, visual effect that goes along with this uh, Thief effect. There is this unique flame pillar we can um, we can see. Um, she has some cast animation. Also, we already found uh, in the debug mode. Actually, let me let me launch. Let me launch uh, Blasphemous with debug, and I'll try to show you. As um, with the debug mode, we already had access to some lore regarding Isidora. Isidora already might have been something that could have been in the Strife and Ruin DLC, but I think they kind of delayed uh, in order to have better... The, the Strife and Ruin DLC is already awesome, but I think we can have... Uh, we will have more than just one thing coming up in the next DLC, just like we had both the Miriam Trials and the... Um, both the mirror and rise and the arcade mode. So here, I'm using some debug comments. Uh, as you can see, I'm having some kind of um, unfinished uh, sword heart. There are some unfinished prayers too. For example, this is a prayer that is taking me back to the last save point I, uh, I used. Uh, actually, the game is a bit loud. Let me check if I'm doing something correctly. And uh, uh, then, what do we have? We have a lot of unused quest items. So I talked about the key grown from the Twisted Wood, which is something that might be uh, regarding stuff in the Ferris tree. Uh, this is something regarding Esdras, so there might be a mo lot more lore about Esdras. And this is mentioning the scythe of Isidora, the singer of the dead. And in this one, I know, or is it in the, this other one? There are stuff regarding the fact that the um, Isidora and the lady is named the Lady of the Ossuary, and uh, that she is near the Ossuary that is under the Church of Albero. So, actually, I'm pretty definitely sure that Isidora will be a boss that will be available uh, once you uncovers all the collectibles uh, item, collectible bones, and once you open the the last door, maybe there might be uh, more bones that there already are in the game. And um, we ha might have uh, people... Uh, we might have uh, new stuff to do regarding bones, but then I'm pretty sure that this door uh, that is in Albero. I'm talking about. This door that is in the Osuary, this one at the top of this room. Of course, I'm going to have all the bones coming up on this safe file. Yeah, th those are my 100% F50 save file I have uh, to practice uh, some runs. And now I'm going to obtain all of the, <laughs> the rewards at once. So yeah, so this is about Isidora, and after that, after I've shown that, I'll show more about her sprites and her animation I've managed to extract. Yeah, you have a lot of rewards when it comes to what you do. So there is this door, and this is pretty definitely sure, there is something behind this door, and some this something might just be Isidora. So, regarding Isidora's fights, um, we have some, uh, some information. First, I will be talking more about what I extracted. So, from what I extracted, there is a lot to do regarding the brazier uh, around Isidora. So, there is brazier full loop, there is brazier half loop, there is brazier half to full. So, and the brazier off. So the brazier in the Isidora fight might be just um, lighting up and going from off to middle light to half to full. And there might be some stuff regarding the fire animation. 
uh, my guess, th this is just a wild guess, um, is that when the when one of the brazier will be full in the Isadora fight, there will be one fire golem like this who will be going around the arena and just messing around with your placement and restricting uh, your area of manipulation. Kind of like what's happening in the Aksamanesidas fight. The Aksamanesidas, once you get 25% uh, of, of uh, her health down, she will start uh, slamming the ground and making fire columns uh, from the side of the arena. So I think this will be kind of similar mechanic of having fire column restricting your area of manipulation. But I think this will be much, much more difficult uh, to manipulate. As, as you can see, uh, this fire seems to be uh, moving on the ground. This has some ground effect. So I think this column will actually take the whole screen and not just uh, part of a brazier. So it might be also moving uh, as a... Um, as it doing as it's doing some effect so we'll see so as you can see as you could have seen in the in the game there are something mentioning Isadora singing so there is this animation of Isadora just basically singing uh, so she might be casting projectiles or stuff because I've managed to find uh, this spreadsheet of Isadora projectile loop so this looks like something that would be um, slow projectile a slow moving projectile with with um, a lot of active hitbox. This is the appearance of the projectile. This is the loop of the projectile. So there might be a lot of stuff regarding that, uh, how she managed to put projectiles here and there. There are some sparkles. I think this is just like some basic, basic visual effects that could be moving here and there. There are some special smoke. So. The projectile, the projectile may be uh, putting a lot of smoke and stuff here. And then there are the attack patterns. So as you can see, Isidora has a lot of stuff where she just moves, she just slices, uh, and then she just starts slamming her thigh into the ground and making a rising attack. Um, I think there is also, uh, do I have it here? This is the roller axe idol I was talking about. And here is the homing turret I was talking to. Here there is the fading out of the fire column, so a lot of art is already done in the, the game. This is something I don't quite remember being in the game, this room. I don't really know where this golden head would have been. If anybody knows, feel free to let me to let me know, because I can't remember where it was. Uh, there are also a lot of sprites, I'll try to re already find them. Okay, so is it raw? We have all of the texture 2D. So this is smoke, this is the scythe sequence final where she just slam into the ground, then she just drag her scythe along the ground and then she do a rising slash and she's go she goes back to idle. Um, I think there is something called fire. Yes, so as you can see, this is a bit hard to see when you are not familiar with that, but this is actually something um, this is the tip of the scythe lighting up. If I show you this, as you can, as you look here, you will see that the the sprite sheet is actually perfectly matching the the scythe of Isidora. So this means that she's dragging her scythe in the ground, and this is making some uh, fire trail as she's coming towards you and making this huge slash with a huge fire effect on it. So this might be a really cool attack to see. So there is press your full, press your full loop, press your half full, press your to half. Um, and then she has a lot of teleportation, um, teleportation animation where she's just out and then she attacks, out and then she casts. Um, she just vanishes from her idle position. This is just the individual. Uh, yeah, those are the sprites I must say on the texture to see. So this is the complete attack of just rising and then she just goes back to idle. This is an attack pattern where she does one slash, a second one. She does one slash, she does a second one and then she 
slams her scythe into the ground, uh, does a raising slash and go back to normal as she twirls. Oh no, she goes into singing. So she has a lot of movement and can chain her animation as I see uh, now. This is a unique animation that is just going back to idol. So she's just like spinning on herself. This is the final animation of the idol. This is the appearance of the of the of the projectile. So twirl to slash anticipation. She might be having some sort of attack where she just waits you to attack, kind of like what Crescenta has. So she might be like of a melting pot of many different um, behavior. We already know on the bosses. So there might be a lot of stuff regarding this boss. Uh, I didn't manage to find anything regarding her room beside the besides the brazier. Uh, maybe if we look at the ossuary, we might be looking something. We have ossuary crypt, where this is what's already act, uh, accessible in the game. If I'm going back. As you can see, we have already access to a lot of stuff. So maybe the room of Isidora is actually already in the game, but this is what's being used uh, for that. And we already have uh, stuff for... As you can see, this is a door that is closed, but doesn't have skull on top of that. And this door has skull on top of it, but uh, there are here the sprites for the door being opened. So because the door is on the right, it's just a matter of flipping the side. This is just a, something you can do really easily with Unity. Uh, but those are basically all the stuff we can use in the Osuri. This is the entrance. This is the left entrance. This is the right entrance with the open uh, door. So we might even be able to already uh, load into the Isetura fight, but I would personally uh, don't like to do that because I would like to know what's the final fight. And maybe once I do that, I'll try to go back to the older version and to know what's uh, inside, what was inside the Osuri at that time. Maybe we'll just crash the game as the boss is not finished and it's just make no references, exceptions all over the place. But uh, we don't know. Okay, and then I think that's about it. Uh, all of what I found. I think there, are may there might be stuff to find yet. Uh, there are a lot of stuff regarding the equipment and the other stuff I found in the game uh, in with the debug menu that might be a bit useful. Uh, there might be also new skins, but I think we could we we have a pretty look neat look of what's coming. Uh, there are there is this new prayer called Tirano the Celestial Bastion, with some lore of the prayer. I don't know what it means, but we might know this uh, sword heart. I'll just show it to you again. Uh, actually, when when you equip this, it makes something pretty cool. as um, it makes your sword glow red. Uh, this is something I noticed re regarding the code, um, regarding the code of the sword, and the mea culpa, when I was trying to look how the damage was calculated from the attack, I managed to find that there is a color field regarding the trail that your sword is leaving behind. Actually, there is a whole different sprite for uh, this trail, as this is, uh, no, actually, this is the trail from when you use, uh, I think it's this prayer. This is the same trail that you use from this player, but co this prayer, but colored in red. So, actually, there might be a lot of neat stuff that could be used in order to uh, change the way you fight, change the way you... Uh, build your equipment and your way to interact with the game. This may be a new thing for neat challenge runs. This game is getting a lot of deaths, and I'm definitely fan about that. So let me know if you're if you if this video was interesting for you. I might be looking a bit more into uh, the next uh, DLC if this come out. Uh, if you like uh, any speedrun stuff regarding Blasphemous, feel free to. 
um, look at what's on my channel. I'm not posting any video regularly. I just stream a bit often, but I let you go to my Twitch channel for that. Uh, feel free to hit the Blasphemous Discord and the Blasphemous Dis Speedrun Discord. I'll put the link in the descriptions. Uh, as there are a lot of lovely people talking about the game and share it, sharing the passion about that. But uh, yeah, this was a really neat findings to have. And um, this game is really awesome and there are, I'm really excited about what's coming up with the next DLC. So yeah, I think that's about it.